carbohydrates make up about 10% of the organic matter of a cell. The functions of carbohydrates in organisms include energy source, released from glucose during respiration, an energy store, for example starch, and for structure, for example cellulose. The simplest carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. These are the monomers of carbohydrates. All larger carbohydrates are made by joining monosaccharides together. All monosaccharides are soluble in water, sweet tasting and form crystals. There are two types of glucose, alpha glucose where the hydrogen at carbon 1 is above the plane of the ring and beta glucose where the hydrogen at carbon 1 is below the plane of the ring. The structural differences between them mean that only alpha glucose can be used for respiration as animals and plants do not have enzymes that break down beta glucose. Monosaccharides can be joined through condensation. When this happens, a water molecule is released. The two molecules are joined by the remaining oxygen. This bond is a glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond between all of the glucose subunits occurs between carbon number 1 of one molecule and carbon number 4 of the other, so it is often called 1 to 4 glycosidic bond. Reversing this process is called hydrolysis, where a glycosidic bond is broken through the addition of water. Joining many alpha glucose molecules together forms amylose. Amylose can consist of many thousands of glucose molecules. The long chains of amylose coil into a spring because of the shape of the glucose molecules. This makes amylose quite compact. Starch in plants is a mixture of amylose and branched amylopectin. It is stored in chloroplasts and membrane-bound starch grains. Starch can be broken down to glucose molecules, which may then be respired to release energy. Glycogen, or animal starch, is also made up of alpha-glucose subunits. It is also a large molecule that can be broken down to release glucose. However, it differs from starch because the 1 to 4 linked glucose chains in glycogen are shorter and have many more branches extending from the chains. This means that it's more compact than starch and forms glycogen granules in animal cells, especially liver and muscle cells. Starch and glycogen are both energy storage molecules. They do not dissolve, so the stored glucose does not affect the water potential of the cell. They also hold glucose molecules in chains so that they can easily be broken off from the ends to provide glucose for respiration when it is required. Joining beta glucose together makes long chains called cellulose. Cellulose chains are long and straight rather than the coiled amylose due to structural differences. Cellulose chains are stronger than the chains found in amylose. Cellulose fibres form plant cell walls. Because the glucose monomers contain so many OH groups, many hydrogen bonds can form between them. About 60 to 70 cellulose molecules become cross-linked by hydrogen bonds. These form bundles called microfibrils. These are held together by more hydrogen bonds to form larger bundles called macrofibrils. They are embedded in a polysaccharide glue of pectins to form cell walls. These walls give great strength to each plant cell. The arrangement of macrofibrils allow water to move through and along cell walls and easily pass in and out of a cell. Water moving into plant cells does not cause the cells to burst. The wall prevents bursting and helps maintain turgidity. The arrangement of macrofibrils and cell walls determine how cells can grow or change shape. For example, guard cell walls have arrangements of macrofibrils that result in the opening and closing of stomata as water moves in or out of the cell. Cell walls can also be reinforced with other substances to provide extra support or to make the walls waterproof. Finally, a number of organisms use structural carbohydrate polymers. The polysaccharide chitin forms the exoskeleton of insects. The polysaccharide peptidoglycan is the basis of the cell walls found around most bacterial cells.